Hi everyone and welcome to Diamond Delight. Today I have a tutorial type video for you where I am going to show you um, the techniques that I use to get my square diamond paintings as straight as possible. just kind of wanted to show you this is how my painting so far is looking and as you add in more drills with your painting everything kind of helps to straighten out so hopefully these tips can help you get started. So the tips that I have to show you guys kind of go in order, starting from, you know, how you get your drills on your tray to how you place them on the actual sheet. So I'm just going to go through them kind of in chronological order and you guys can follow along. So we're going to start with just getting your drills all laid out nice and even on your tray. Um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to shake it back and forth. And as you do that, you're going to tilt the tray to the left and to the right so that all the diamonds can fill in those little slots. Then you're gonna point it down, and I like to kind of rub it against the canvas, some of the drills, um, that texture kind of helps them slide down. If you really want it to get perfect, um, you can take the back end of your tweezers, and I find that if you run it along the ridges, it kind of helps all these extra ones uh, slide down, just like that. You see them all kind of slide into place, okay? So then you have your drills. Um, if you really want them all settled down, you can even tilt it horizontally and do that again and they all kind of will fall down so they're all nice and lined up. The next step I do is a little bit extra, but um, you know, if you want to have your drills straight on your canvas, then it's important to have straight drills to start with. So I take my light pad but you can just as easily use the white screen on your cell phone or a flashlight to get the job done. And I turn it on and I like to put my tray on top of the light pad and sometimes I'll even block out, you know, my lamp, my overhead lamp so I can see the silhouette of the drills that I'm working with. And I find that that makes it easier to pick out um, uneven drills that have extra little tabs on them um, because I can see the silhouette, it helps me identify them. So I know it's getting a little bit blurry, but this one right here you can see has that extra nub. I just take that. I have a little green tray here where I put all my trash. And um, I find that lining them up like this, I can find ones that either are misshapen or have extra little tabs on them and I just take them out as needed. And I'll just kind of line them up like this. See that one's not sitting straight. So I'll take that one out. Um, these drills look pretty good, so I'm not going to be taking too many of them out. And I'll, again, I'll do this to kind of, if you get them to line up, it makes it a lot easier to see when there's an odd one out and you can kind of poke it around and see, you know, did it just not lie flat or is there an extra nub? Like on this one, there's an extra nub, so I'm going to take that out. So, um, this definitely takes some extra time. See, there's two that are stuck together, but I do find that if you have good drills, then you are going to have better success placing them nice and even. Now, most kits should come with enough extra drills that you shouldn't have to worry about throwing out your trash. But if it is a company that you're questioning and if they tend to have a lot of trash for a certain color, um, I would recommend actually saving your trash drills because, you know, say you end up putting half of these drills in here in the trash, you don't want to end up at the end without that color. So, you know, a trash drill of the right color, I would argue is better than no drill at all. So what I tend to do when I have those kits that I'm worrying about is I will store them. This is a just like an egg carton container. And what I'll do is I will put little pieces of tape and I'll label the, num the DMC number. And then, um, yeah, I'm not doing it for this kit, but just to show you. So say this was whatever number I'm working on, then each time I have trash, I'll put it in there so that at the end, I'll most likely throw these out, but say I get to the end and I don't have enough of this color, then I'll dig through here and maybe if I was extra picky, maybe there's some drills that actually work fine, I just, you know, they weren't perfect, um, then I can dig in here and use those. And that has actually saved me um, twice with paintings um, so far. So I think that it's worth doing it. If you really can't be bothered, you can always buy extra drills, but that's just my own personal preference. Another thing I want to quickly say is that I don't always take the, my light pad and, you know, put it on top of the drawing. Sometimes with this light border, there's enough light that I can do this, kind of cover the light source, and I can still see what I'm doing. So I'll often just keep this, you know, right above where I'm working, 
and and just move them on over as long as I can still see the light behind to make sure that my drills look good. You also want to pay attention to what your drills look like under direct light. So the backlight helps for if there's extra nubs around them, but the light in the front is going to help you with ones like this that have um, little holes or bubbles in them. So you want to do both a backlight check and a light, a direct light on the drill check. The placement of your tray can also have a big effect on how easy it is to place your drills. So I like to just bring my tray right up next to the section I'm working on, say I'm working on this S section, so that I can just bring the drills right on over, easy transition. Um, if you have it at an angle, then it's a little bit harder to have to grab it and then tilt your hand on over there. So I just like to line it up as close as where the drill is going to go as it can. I'm going to start by showing you the checkerboard technique. Um, and I did not come up with this technique. It's, it's a very well-known technique in diamond painting. Most people I know use it. Um, and it's just a way of placing your diamonds so that they stay as straight as possible. And basically what it means is that you're placing, um, kind of what it sounds like, you're placing your diamonds in a checkerboard pattern. So you're going to go on diagonals every other one instead of um, you know going one, two, three, one, two, three. You go every other one and it makes a checkerboard pattern and then you go back in and you fill in the holes and it kind of keeps everything straight. What I like to do is I like to first place the drills with tweezers because I find that I can get a really precise placement and if I spend some extra time making sure that those guiding drills are straight then it makes it easier when I'm placing the rest of the drills in. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you what it looks like to set up the checkerboard. I also like to work from top left down to bottom right because I'm right-handed. So for example, if I were to place the drill on the bottom right first, I find that it's a little bit harder to get my tweezer in there because this is blocking it and it's kind of, I have to kind of work around it. It's possible, but it's just a little bit harder. Um, so I like to always work from top left to bottom right. If you are left-handed, then that would be working from top right to bottom left, just the opposite. And that's again, just so that your hand and your tweezers don't get hit and bumped aside by the drills that you've already placed. Then I'll go back and I will just kind of look at how I've placed them. This particular color is a little bit hard because the lines are so light. So it's a little hard for me to see exactly where I've placed them and if I've placed them exactly in the hole that they need to go. But um, it will all kind of even out on the end. Um, another thing I like to do is if there's a lone one like this and there's a diamond here already, I will pick up the drill kind of on the edge so that there's all this room on the right hand side and then I can place the already existing drill in that right hand side and just slide it there and it kind of keeps it nice and straight and in line. And then I just go back in with my pen and I will fill in all the gaps that I just made and I kind of push the diamond against the diamonds that are already placed and it keeps them nice and straight. And this part is the really satisfying, fun part in my opinion and most people's opinion who I ask. Another thing I like to do is um, I like to be aware of where I'm placing my pen on the drill itself. So for example, I'm going to be placing this drill next. Because there's already a diamond to the left, to the right, and below it, I'm going to want to pick up my next drill at the top of it. Because that way, if my pen is at the top of the drill, it's not going to get in the way of these drills that are already placed. They're not going to all smash together and move my pen away. So I'm going to try to pick it up at the top of the drill. So let me see if I can show that to you. I'm going for this drill. Let me focus the camera. I'm going to pick it up at the top, see? 
And that way, when I come, I push it up against the already existing drills and there's no interference between my pen and the drills that are already there. For drills like this that are surrounded on all four sides, it doesn't matter as much. I just pick it up pretty much right in the middle. Um, again, for this one, because it has drills on the left, the right, and the top, I'm gonna go on the bottom where there's not any drills already. So let me show you. I'm gonna pick it up down here at the bottom and I'm gonna come up here and push it. The reason that you'll see all this extra wax coming off on my pen is because I like to keep a lot of wax in my pen. Um, I find that I have a better grip and that it holds on to the drill a lot better if I do have a little bit of extra wax. And then I just make sure when it, when it gushes out, like what I just showed you kind of gushes out at the end, that I just tuck it back in so that it doesn't, um, you know, become unstuck and stick onto the drills. Okay, so once again, I have this drill. It has, it's surrounded on two sides, the top and the right. So I'm gonna go to the opposite corner and pick up the drill on the bottom left. So to show you, I'll pick it up here on the bottom left. And then when I place it, now my pen's not getting in the way of the drills. Same thing with this. Gonna pick it up on the opposite side. Okay. And you just keep on doing that until you are done filling in your checkerboard. Now, this doesn't look quite perfect just because I've been on camera and um, you know the, the phone is a little bit in my way so it's a little hard to see exactly what I'm doing. But when you are doing this on your own and not having a camera in your way, I guarantee you it'll be easier and it'll look better than what I'm doing right now. And that's it with the light off just in case you wanted to see. Okay, so that's pretty much it to the checkerboard method. If you want, you can go over it with um, this straightener and you can kind of make them all lined up, um, you know, whatever your preference is. It doesn't matter if they're perfectly straight or not. Most people won't notice. For me personally, I love having straight drills and it's part of what makes diamond painting enjoyable for me. So that's why I put a little extra work into that. I also really quickly wanted to show you how I do the edges of my diamond painting, how I make them um, as straight and even as possible. What you'll need is, let me zoom out a little bit. You'll need some kind of a, like a credit card type thing, something that's really sturdy and has a straight edge on it. This is just like my insurance card. <laughs> I covered up my information so you won't be able to see it. Um, I put duct tape on the end so it wouldn't stick to the canvas. Um, and you're just gonna basically be using this as a straight edge. You can use a ruler, a credit card, whatever you find. Then what I do is I find a color that's on the edge. Um, for me, I'm just gonna use this same S color because that's what I have been using. And um, I'm really picky about what drills I use, so I'm, I make sure to use kind of the light like I have been using. I block out the front light and use the back light to find drills that are really, really straight because I want that really, really straight edge. So I'm kind of looking through them, finding one that looks perfect and straight. This one looks good. And I'm gonna place it down. I'm gonna make sure to line it up really nicely with that line on the side and push it down so it kind of sticks a little bit, okay? Then I'm gonna find one or two more. This one looks good. I'm gonna stick it down right here. Take your time on this step. And then what I do, if this is a bit easier because I already have something to work off from. I have this straight line right here. Um, but what I do is I line up my card so that it's touching, it's pressed right up against the, these drills. And then the new drills that I just placed, I almost overlap it a little bit and then push so that it's a really tight fit, nice and tight with the rest of it. You can um, tape it down on the canvas or sometimes the canvas has extra adhesive on the side and this will just stick or you can just hold it in place with your hand. So now that I have this border here for me, I will um, work the first, you know, five or six rows, just the first five or six rows so I can really focus on getting this nice and straight. Once those five or six rows are done, then I'll take this off um, and continue on the rest of the way. So I'll fill in the rest of the drills that are touching the border. What I'll do is um, I'll make sure there's a little overlap. Uh, the tweezers, I'll pick it up on the right side of the drill so there's overlap here. And I'll push it really close to that, um, that card. Again, you might have to hold it in place so it doesn't slide when you're pushing. But I make sure it's a nice 
close fit that these are all nice and snug so that we'll have that uniform line. Um, then I'll just continue on and I'll check checkerboard the rest of the way just like I did with that other section. And I'll make sure it's nice and straight. And I will keep on checkerboarding and again use that technique where I leave a little bit of a gap on the tweezers and slide it right into that one I already placed. Okay, then when it's time to go and fill in the rest of the checkerboard with your pen, again, I pick up the dot, the drill, so that there's extra room on the left since I'm going to be pushing it into the left side. And I push it really far into where I have that card placed. Okay, you'll hear a little click because you're kind of squeezing things, but that's what you want. You want a nice tight fit. And when I place the gem here, I'm going to really be pushing pushing to the left because I want this pushed up right against the card. And yes, my hand is sticking to the canvas. Normally I use, you know, a piece of parchment paper or something to make sure that um, my hand is not sticking to the canvas, but I did not have time to go and grab that today. So I'm just making do with what I have available to me right now. Okay, so we have that section. Then I would go ahead and go in with the black. Okay, again, I'm going to shake out my tray with my black in it. Um, picking out the bad ones on the black is always going to be a little bit more of a process because there are a lot of bad ones in black in general. So just to kind of show you guys again, I'm holding my tray over the light, the light pad so I can easily see the silhouette of, um, see these little round ones of my drills and make sure that I'm taking out any ones that are not even. So these ones don't have even tabs, but they're just, you can kind of see it's, it's a weird tilted shape and that's going to mess up your drills. So it takes a little extra work in the beginning, but I can pretty quickly find all the bad ones. There are quite a few bad ones in here. So I'm actually going to turn off the camera so I can handle these and get them off off screen. And then I'll be back when I've gone through um, all of the drills and gotten rid of the really bad ones. You can always do it as you go and just pick out, um, you know, if you have a backlight, you can pick out the ones that you like as you go. I do that even though I go through them all, I still um, will pick out kind of the ones I like best as I'm going especially for these end sections. So I relined up my card, I'm holding it in place, I'm doing the same thing where I push it nice and tight. There we go. And then I'm gonna fill in the checkerboard. Um, when I get to a spot like this where there's already a drill next to it, I will re-angle my tweezers like so, so that again, there's nothing in the way. If I were to go in like this, it would be hard to get my tweezers because they want to squeeze in between that area. So I angle it like this so that there's nothing in the way. Not everyone likes to use tweezers, so you definitely don't have to. It's up to your preference. I have just found that this is how I get the straightest drill placement. And you can work up as far as you like. You know, I said four to five rows, which would probably be right about here. But sometimes if I'm working on black, I'm like, let me just continue. I'll go over here and do these black ones. Again, angling my tweezers so that there's nothing in the way. See, now that just was a nice clean placement. I didn't have to worry about my tweezers banging around there. Okay, and I don't always do perfect checkerboard because right now I'd have to put a checkerboard here. And again, that's kind of hard to fit my tweezers in, so I'll just do it here where I have more free room and then I can fill those in there. Okay, and now the favorite part, we're filling in the checkerboard. And again, I see that this green is kind of far away from the edge, so I'm really going to push. Push it up nice and close next to that border that I set. Sometimes you'll find that because it's a tight fit, your drills won't lie perfectly flat. So I'll just take the tweezers and I'll push it in there. Do you hear that? That's me pushing it in there, okay? 
so that you want a nice tight fit but you want to make sure the whole drill is touching the sticky canvas so it stays on if you see any little gaps you can always go ahead and straighten it out you can use this guy while you have this card next to you it's kind of nice it keeps it everything nice and in place you can go both horizontally and vertically if you want to get a really nice tight fit and remember that when you turn the light pad off this will look a lot straighter so just to show you see looks great and then you know after you do a few rows up set a good base that's not going to move then you can go ahead and take this off if there's stickiness here i just add a piece of tape and then you have a nice clean line that stays really nice and straight Okay everyone, those are my main tips for how I keep my square diamond painting drills as straight as possible. Um, I am considering maybe doing a video on how to manage really large diamond paintings, how to section them off, and some tips and things to avoid that I've learned through trial and error. So if you're interested in that, um, leave a comment below and let me know, or if there's something else, some other tip you'd like to see or if you'd like me to elaborate on anything I talked about today, I would be happy to do so. So just let me know in the comments um, what kind of videos would be helpful for you. And let me know if you have any tips for keeping your drills straight that I didn't cover in this video. I'd love to hear, and I'd love to hear from you in general, whatever you're working on. It's always great to connect with um, my viewers. So thank you again for watching and I will see you next time.